Happy Wednesday, Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. And something we've been tracking a lot of is Illinois litigation against the state's gun and magazine ban. Hasn't been a lot of movement there. Uh, So we'll touch on where we're at with that litigation. But there's stuff popping all over the country uh, that deals with gun rights and challenges against either laws and states or even federal rules through the ATF. And there was a big ruling yesterday that deals with pistol braces. And uh, this is impacting uh, potentially millions of people across the country when it comes to a rule that the ATF had put together uh, concerning pistol braces. If you're not familiar with what a pistol brace is, uh, it essentially allows for uh, people with disabilities to uh, maybe somebody who's an amputee, uh, they can fire a semi-automatic firearm uh, with with more accuracy and stability if they have a pistol brace. Uh, But what happened was the ATF had a rule that reclassified these braces as attached to firearms as short barreled rifles and thereby violating the uh, National Firearms Act, which was passed decades ago and deals with all kinds of uh, what uh, may be considered dangerous and unusual weapons. But yesterday in the Fifth Circuit's Court of Appeals for the federal courts, they granted an injunction pending appeal of this case and the order says it's ordered that the appeal is expedited to the next available oral argument calendar it's further ordered that appellants opposed motion for preliminary injunction pending appeal is granted as the plaintiffs in this case so the uh, firearms policy coalition uh they're pretty active on social media and uh, at first when this ruling came out they plastered it all over it got shared a ton uh, a lot of people talking about this but there were questions as to who would be impacted by this because in illinois when we had temporary restraining orders in state courts issued against the law being enforced on individuals That only impacted the named plaintiffs in those Illinois cases. If you recall, Tom DeVore, an attorney, he has thousands of clients that have temporary restraining orders keeping them safe from the state, enforcing the state's gun and magazine ban against them. Uh, But it did not impact statewide. Uh, It wasn't until the federal courts in the Southern District uh, issued a preliminary injunction that impacted everybody statewide. But again, that only lasted for six days when the state went to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals and got a stay on that injunction. We've talked a lot about that. Uh, But with this particular issue, this is a federal issue, and it deals with the ATF and their rule saying that these pistol braces are uh, short-barreled rifles or can convert a firearm into a short-barreled rifle. Uh, But, uh, again, you got a judge who, uh, a court, a circuit court, saying that uh, there's an injunction here uh, with an expedited appeal. Uh, But who's impacted by this? Questions remained. Firearms Policy Coalition, uh, after talking with their attorneys and digesting the order, uh, they ended up putting out a statement on Twitter saying, if you joined Federal uh, Firearms Policy Coalition, FPC, uh, at joinfpc.org or renewed in the past 12 months, then you're good to go. If you're unsure about membership status, just email, and uh, our awesome fulfillment team members will uh, give you a hand. And uh, if you haven't, consider joining FPC today uh, as they are uh, hunting gun control and uh, their legal team needs the help to continue their work. And then they share a uh, uh, an image. What was that from? Uh, was that from Predator? <laughs> With uh, the two main characters there, uh, given uh, you know a high five and, and a flex of their massive muscles, so uh, this obviously is a, a a big news day for those who've been watching this case very closely, uh, because uh, I think it was like June first when the rule would go into effect, essentially uh, criminalizing potentially millions of people across the country. Uh, but you have this ruling that's been issued in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals for the federal courts, granting that injunction pending appeal. In this case, obviously, the uh, federal government's going to appeal this uh, if they haven't already filed that appeal, and uh, it'll go on from there. But you've got an injunction in place, but only impacting members who sued 
including uh, the Firearm Policy Co- Coalition that uh, has members that are uh, part of this lawsuit simply by being members. Now, where are we at with all of the state-level and federal-level cases here in the state of Illinois challenging the gun and magazine ban that was issued January 10th? Well, there's a lot. Uh, we haven't had much movement, but just to kind of give you a place setting of where we are, uh, you've got Tom DeVore's cases, three of them consolidated in the lower courts. That's still being hashed out. Uh, the latest status I saw was that uh, a judge has taken a, um, a motion under advisement uh, concerning the uh, possibility of releasing information through subpoenas uh, to get information from uh, not just legislative leaders on how they crafted the law, but also uh, nonprofit associations representing law enforcement across the state, how they may have been involved. So that's all down in the in the lower county level courts in state court in Illinois. Uh, Then you have the Macon County case brought by State Representative Dan Calkins. That was heard by the Illinois Supreme Court just the other week, and they still have that under advisement. So those are the state level cases. Federal level cases, you've got the Southern District of Illinois uh, cases that were consolidated. They have now been consolidated in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals after an injunction was issued in the Seventh Circuit, uh, reversed that injunction with a stay. And those cases are on an expedited process as well. They're consolidated with a couple of Northern District Illinois gun ban challenges that don't just challenge the state's gun ban, but also challenge Cook County and Chicago's gun ban and Naperville's gun ban. Uh, So that case is pending in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals with an expedited briefing schedule, and they're set to hear that in oral arguments next month, June 29th, in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, that's where those cases are because the U.S. Supreme Court, they denied uh, taking up the case. Uh, because the expedited appeal in the Seventh Circuit's ongoing. Uh, So the U.S. Supreme Court denied an emergency injunction in the Naperville challenge. Uh, So that's kind of where we're at in the the, uh, ongoing litigation against not just Illinois' gun ban, but also uh, gun regulation and rules across the country, let alone uh, all of the other challenges there are to other states' Uh, legislation and laws. Uh, you've got a case out of Maryland uh, that uh, that could impact what the Seventh Circuit Court does uh, in this jurisdiction. You've got cases in California. You've got things dealing with uh, whether or not somebody who's a cannabis user uh, being kept from being able to own firearms, whether or not somebody who uh, you know is hit with a red flag law, not convicted of anything, uh, whether those orders of protection can restrict somebody's rights to the Second Amendment. Uh, those are things that are being dealt with in other courts across the country. So there's a lot going on when it comes to the Second Amendment and the litigation that's uh, ongoing and continuing uh, across the spectrum, not just from federal courts, but to state courts, not just from gun bans, but to other uh, measures when it comes to uh, how firearms are regulated in this country. So uh, tons uh, still on the table. And uh, one big question here in Illinois is, will Illinois' gun ban be sorted out before the January 1st, 2024 deadline for people to register their firearms? That has yet to be seen. So obviously, we'll be keeping a close eye on that.